I think we've got everything we need. Let's head back to work and cut a hole in the car. <coughs> Probably should say fit a snorkel. No, no, cut a hole in the car's good. Yeah, cool. G'day guys, Nathan from Fabulous. Have you ever wondered what tools you need to fit one of our snorkel kits? Well, on today's episode, we're gonna duck down to our local trade tools and pick up all the specialty items that you require to fit one of our kits yourself at home. <laughs> So we've just come down to our local trade tool store. The guys have been kind enough to sort us out with everything we need to be able to fit a snorkel. So let's head inside and pick it all up. So the first thing we're gonna to need to get is a drill. Here's one the guys have prepared earlier for us. So we're using the 3 8 keyless chuck, $75. Uh, the 3 8 chuck is smaller than normal, usually it's a half inch, but with the 9.5mm drill bit, 3 8 is more than big enough. So we'll use this for drilling the pillar and drilling the starting hole in the guard. We're also going to do something a little bit different to what we'd usually do, and I'm going to put the spiro band in the drill, so that way we don't have to buy a die grinder as well. So the next thing we're going to grab is a Renegade air hacksaw. So everything we'll be using today will be Renegade brand, which is Trade Tools house brand. So the boys have also got one ready for us. It's just $69, nice and cheap, and it's gonna do everything that we need it to do today. Now that we've got the air saw, let's go pick some blades. So we've covered this before, but one thing that is very important is blade selection. So you'll see here that there is a range of three different teeth. There's an 18 tooth, a 24, and a 32. Thankfully, these guys have made it really easy because they've set on the front what application is best suited to. So what we don't recommend is buying something with 18 teeth because the guard is so thin, the less teeth on the blade, the more likely it is to jump and grab and that could end up with you damaging the panel. So always, always pick a 32 TPI blade. Now these blades are suited to this air hacksaw and we'll go through putting that in when we get back to the workshop. So one thing we're gonna do a little bit differently today, usually we would buy a spiro band and put it in a die grinder, but to save on cost, we're gonna put the spiro band in the drill. So we're gonna grab an 80 grit spiro band. We're gonna grab the smaller size diameter they have as well, which is important because you need a small one to get right up in the top corner of the guard cutout. All right, moving on, we're gonna find a nutsert gun. Sick. So, uh, force branded nutsert gun, again, 69 bucks. This kit does M3, M4, M5, and M6. M6 is the most common size that you'll probably ever use, but the smaller ones are handy as well. Opposed to our worth ratcheting one, this is a normal pistol grip style gun. With the nutsert that we supply, this gun will be more than fine for putting them in. So, nutsert gun, air hacksaw, drill, Whoa. blades, Spiro band, I think we've got everything we need. Let's head back to work and cut a hole in the car. Let's go fit some snorks. Quick, run! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're back at the workshop. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use the tools we just picked up from Trade Tools to install a snorkel on this D-Max. I'm not gonna run you through the entire fitting like we usually would. If you are after a more detailed fitting video, there is a link to another one on our YouTube channel. Basically, we're just gonna be covering the specifics of using these tools to install one of our snorkels. So 
now we've gone through, we've fully unpacked everything. Uh, we've oiled our air tools, which is important for longevity. Got the blade in. We're gonna go ahead and show you how to use them on the car. So one thing we didn't pick up at Trade Tools was a step drill. These will be available for purchase on our website shortly. The reason we use them is because the back of the cutout is such a tight hole on this specific circle, it makes it heaps easier to cut this out. If you're doing something like a Ranger or an N70, N80, you won't incur this problem. So just your nine and a half mil drill bit's fine. So we're gonna chuck that in there, make sure it's tight. And we're gonna drill inside the template. And then we'll do the same again at the front and that can be your starting point. That went really well, I'm glad. Now that we've got our two starting points, gonna go ahead and cut the hole out. Like I said before, as fine tooth as possible, 32 TPIs are recommended. There you have it, literally that easy. So you'll notice on the air saw, it does have this guide on the bottom of it. That is so that you can rest the saw against the panel and cut it out. For the front half of the hole, that would be fine. But when you get closer to the back with that against the panel, there is some inner structure on the inside that you could risk running into. And if you hit that inner structure on the inside, the saw will definitely jump out and will run right up the panel. And I know that for a fact because it's happened to me before. So what we recommend is to, as you can see, use the, about halfway through the blade. This way you'll make sure that you're in deep enough so it's not gonna jump out, but you're also not in too far that it's gonna risk any hitting any structure in the back. So to do this, I generally hold the saw against my hand like that and use my hand as a guide on the panel. And I'll just run up the panel using my hand as the backstop. So as comparing that to my snap-on tool that I use every day, this is more than capable of cutting the hole out. It's a little bit bigger in size, but that's perfectly fine. So for $70, as compared to 400 and whatever these are, this is the way I would go if you were gonna be installing one of these at home. So I'm gonna try something a little bit different today. Usually, I would use a die grinder with a, a spiro band on it to clean up the guard. And so what we wanna do is we wanna get rid of all the sharp edges before we paint it and before we put the pinch weld on. So usually die grinder, spiral band, I'd clean it up. But for the sake of being as cost effective as possible, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in the drill, give it a go and see how it works. So the only thing I think I could probably suggest with this is you have to be very careful that you don't come out or catch an edge with the spiral band because it can run up the panel. So same again, just make sure you're bracing it really well. Um, I'm probably gonna hold one finger on it and sort of squeeze the drill into myself so that way it's nice and firm and there's minimal risk of me doing that. Cool, so yeah, that actually worked really well. Um, you will notice I spent a little bit of time up at the back of the hole. That's because the D-Maxes have uh, like a matte padding on the back of the guard just to give it a bit of stiffness. Like I said before, same as Rangers, N70s, all that sort of gear, you won't encounter that. Um, but it's good to know that this process does work in that application. So now we've cut and deburred the hole. We're gonna go ahead, put the pinch weld on and test fit the snorkel like it says in the instructions. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and mark the pillar, making sure that the snorkel is lined up with the bottom of bracket measurements, which are in the instructions as well. 
And again, like it says in the instructions, make sure that you're a maximum of eight mil down from the outside, especially on the D-Maxes, because they do have that inner structure you can hit if the bracket is too far down the door. We're going to drill the hole in the pillar now. Usually I'd use a cordless drill. Today, for the video, we're using the pneumatic one. Now, one thing I've noticed is that this drill has significantly lower RPM than this drill does. To counteract that, what I'm going to do is, because of the lower RPM, I'm just going to put no pressure on the drill whatsoever, and I'm just going to let the drill bit do all the work. I've never used a pneumatic drill to drill a pillar before, so I'm going to adjust my procedure for the best possible outcome. To make this as easy as possible, we're going to use the Worth 9.5mm step drill. So as you can see, it's a step drill and a drill bit all in one. Now what this allows us to do is to only use one drill bit instead of a couple of different sizes, and it makes this whole process much easier. And since switching to these drill bits, we've found absolutely no problems with drilling the pillar. These drill bits are available on our website, so when you buy a snorkel online, you can also add that to your cart at the same time. To make this as smooth as possible, I'm gonna hold the drill hard into my chest, I'm gonna hold my finger against the pillar, and I'm just gonna let the drill bit do all the work and put absolutely no pressure on there. Cool, so what I actually found then was that I had to apply more pressure than what I would with the cordless drill. So that was a good thing to figure out. But yeah, as you can see with the Worth drill bit, each as it stepped up each size, it sort of went through and stopped and went through and stopped. And so the advantage of that is you can hear the drill change noise so you know when it's about to go through, so you know when to let pressure off. So that way you don't go and put a pimple in the outside of the pillar. So yeah, all in all, really good outcome. So as usual, we're just going to go ahead and put a deep burr on the hole that you've just drilled. So one thing I will say is that was actually a little bit difficult with the air drill. So I reckon I would almost maybe do that by hand as opposed to putting it in the drill only for when you're deburring. All right, so before we move on to nutset and the pillar, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the nutserts that we use. So you'll notice in the kit, uh, the ones that you come supplied with are what's referred to as a large flange nut set. And what that means is that it has a large flange on it. So the large flange nut certs are not to be used in this application. And I'm gonna show you on this test piece why. As you can see, nut certs we supply, and that's a large flange nut cert. So what that means is, because of the way we mount our brackets and our snorkels, we use the surface area of the bracket to spread the pressure as much as possible. So if you have the bracket against the large flange nut cert, what you can see is that the bracket doesn't actually touch the body, and then that way it's relying on the nuts to hold the pressure and hold the snorkel and over time we've seen that this method of mounting can actually cause the pillar to crack around the nuts because it's literally just relying on the two nine and a half mil holes to hold a whole snorkel however with the small flange nuts you can see that it mounts the bracket hard against the panel and uses the whole bracket, spreads the whole surface area and puts much less pressure on these 9.5mm holes so there's much less chance of it ever cracking out around the nutsert itself. Suck on your boss. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and put the nutserts in the pillar now. When you do this, it is important that when you put the nutsert gun into the pillar and when you're squeezing it up, that you're holding it square. If you're holding it a little bit uh, crooked, it can pull the nuts out up funny and then you won't be able to mount it properly. So just make sure that you hold a little bit of pressure against it, nice and square against the pillar. So, and you can jump in the car to make this a bit easier. Just like a rivet gun, just squeeze the handles up until it goes firm and then wind it back out. So I mean, usually we use our Worth branded ratcheting one. 
but for this application, this is more than fine. We supply steel nut certs because we found that in the past we used to supply stainless ones and without the ratcheting gun, you physically couldn't pull them up. So the steel nut certs mean that you can still use a tool like this at home and be more than fine. So yeah, look, for a $70 tool, this thing is awesome. Uh, it does everything that we need it to do and it'll do more. It comes with, like I said, the different size mandrels, M3 right through to M6. It comes with a couple of nut certs. So for $70, having one of these in your shed, it's a, a pretty worthy investment in my opinion. So to summarize how we went, I think that all went really, really well. All of this stuff was less than 250 bucks. And uh, I mean, if you look after it, it's stuff that's gonna last you a lifetime. I think the guys at Trade Tool says this does have a lifetime warranty and these tools did have 12 months warranty, uh, which is an added advantage of being a Trade Tools member. It keeps all your paperwork online. So that way, if you do ever have any issues, you can just go straight back into store, quote your phone number and they can bring up your purchase history so that you don't have to hang on to the paper receipts. Like I said, I was a little bit worried about using the pneumatic drill to drill the pillar, but it went fine using the drill bit that you can purchase on our website. The nut cert gun was more than capable of pulling up the nut certs that come in your kit. The air hacksaw cut the guard perfectly and using the spire band in the drill worked as well as a good compromise to having a die grinder. So yeah, for 250 bucks to be able to buy everything we needed from Trade Tools in the one spot to be able to fit a snorkel, no brainer. So anyway guys, that gives you a brief rundown on all of the tools that you need to be able to fit a snorkel at home by yourself. Really impressed with the quality of the Renegade products. They were more than capable of doing everything that we needed them to do and we'll probably put them into use in the workshop. So guys, do us a favour, like, subscribe, comment. That way it gives our marketing guy justification for his job. See you next time.